While the labor unions were negotiating the minimum wage with the government, many things went under the radar. This was revealed by the NLC president when he spoke to Channels TV. He said that Tinubu actually offered 250,000 naira minimum wage to the labor unions, but they rejected it, opting to accept 70,000 naira minimum wage. Let's take a listen. And accepting 70,000 70, was the best way to make sure that we save Nigerians from further hardship. The, uh, at the last week meeting, the president brought a proposal. I will give you guys 250 if you allow me to equally increase the pump price of petroleum products. And we said, no, we need to go and consult. Today, we went there to tell him, no, you know, the labor movement can make sacrifices without allowing Nigerians to suffer further on the increase on pump price of petroleum products. We equally looked at it that within five years, instead of dragging for five years, we are still going to have another negotiation before the end of the present administration, thereby negotiating two times within five years. And by that time, we need to equally move higher based on the situation of the moment. Now, there are equally other incentives, although those ones are promissory notes, but we need to follow them up that made us to anchor this on something. Now, in the history of negotiation, either here or elsewhere, is for you to push beyond even 130% or more, it you know, has a lot to say. There are people, other stakeholders, the organized private sector, the SMEs, you know, they are under pressure for us. You know, the ease of doing business is another thing. You know, the energy costs, all my foreign exchange, all my manner of course. Those businesses, we took them into consideration. Why waiting that we are going to review this, you know, is shorter than it ought to have been? Well, since he said they consulted among themselves before rejecting the 250,000 Naira, there's nothing else to add. After all, they represent the workers. The workers must have accepted the information they communicated to them and reasoned with them that it is better to accept 70,000 Naira since the government can guarantee that they will not increase petrol price in the next three years, at least before another wage negotiation can take place. If they did all that, you can't cry more than they believed, but it wouldn't stop us from analyzing the issues further. The problem with the 70,000 Naira minimum wage is that it's not actually an increase, rather, it is an adjustment for inflation. When you look at the old minimum wage of 30,000 Naira, how much it was worth early last year in dollars, you can see that on the screen. Compare that to how much 70,000 Naira is worth today. You can see it's virtually the same thing. So it was just an adjustment to reflect inflation. After the government devalued the Naira by about 200%, the Naira became virtually worthless. That was why workers started demanding for a wage increase. At the end of the day, they couldn't get that increase. Rather, the government readjusted the minimum wage to reflect inflation. So the labor unions shouldn't celebrate this. And how are they sure that the government will negotiate a new minimum wage in less than three years? Are they going to amend the laws to reflect that? We know how long it takes to negotiate a new minimum wage according to the laws in Nigeria. Looking back to when the minimum wage was still 18,000 Naira, that 18,000 Naira was worth more than $100 at the time. In fact, it is comparable to the minimum wage of the early 80s. Compare that to the minimum wage of today, you will see how low the Naira has sunk. It's not the fault of the Nigerian worker that he is earning less today. It is the fault of the government. They make all the economic decisions, all the policies. It's not as if minimum wage is not increased in developed economies. They do that all the time. But the difference is, it's hard for inflation to reach double digits in these developed countries. They never make decisions that plunge their economy to serious crisis. That's the difference. Here, people purposely, intentionally make decisions and tell you, hey, you have to sacrifice. Why they don't sacrifice? To them, it is do as I say, don't do as I do. They will be buying presidential jets, embarking on massive non-priority projects 
that will not add any value to the economy or to the lives of the people. Instead, it will only add value to their own lives. They will be doing all this while plunging the economy into deep and deep mess. So this is the difference. Ordinarily, no one should be demanding minimum wage increase every few years if the government is managing the economy perfectly. There is no economy that can grow without having an efficient mass transit system. Something like around 5,000 naira per month to the average worker. Even if it's 10,000 naira per month to and fro to work for one month, it's still better than what they go through in public transportation. Not just the frustration of getting buses, it is the time that is lost. This is economic time that is wasted forever. How long they have to wait for a bus? And when the bus arrives, the bus will have to wait till it is full before leaving the station. So having an efficient mass transit system alone increases productivity. It increases the value of the minimum wage without even needing to increase the amount physically. Just that efficient transport system alone solves a lot of problems for the average worker. He will arrive to work early every day because there is no traffic. The efficient mass transit system doesn't experience traffic. So there are many things the government can gain, not just the government, the economy will boom if there is efficient mass transit system. This is why the decision of the government to remove petrol subsidy or to increase the petrol price seriously hurt the Nigerian economy because the economy depends solely on petrol. In fact, petrol is the main driver of Nigeria's economy not just for transportation, but for running businesses. Many small-scale medium enterprises depend on petrol generators to power their businesses, power their small manufacturing. Many offices, many homes, they depend on petrol because the power supply is inefficient. It is erratic. Another sector that can improve the value of workers' wages is the housing sector. If there is a way the government can make it possible for someone who has 100,000 naira alone to get on the property ladder, to be able to deposit that 100,000 naira as a deposit for the mortgage and start paying monthly, deductible up to 30 years or even 35 years. If that is possible, that's the job of the government, they should find ways. Their job is to find solutions. Even if it's a house that is worth 10 million naira, let them find a way to build a house that is cheap so that workers can live in their own homes while working instead of paying rent. Do you know the confidence it gives a worker that is living in his own house? If he will give his 100%, he will make sure he doesn't lose that job because he knows his life depends on the job to finish paying off his mortgage. The next one is food. Why is food no longer affordable to the average worker? This is the question the government must answer. A country with millions of hectares of arable land can no longer farm and feed itself to flood the market with food so as to drive down the cost. So increasing the value of the Naira is actually very simple. It's a pity we are still discussing this after it was discussed during the negotiations with our Basanjo administration. That's more than 20 years ago when the labor unions were negotiating for an increase in the minimum wage. Obasanjo promised at the time that the government will embark on projects that will improve the value of the minimum wage. Projects like housing, mass transit, many things that will make sure that at least any amount that a worker is paid as salary will be valuable to him. It can take him home. But 20 years after, we are still talking about the same thing. The government hasn't improved anything. All these sectors, they are even worse than they were 20 years ago. So, this is all on the government. There's a limit to how long the labor unions can stretch the strike. No one wants to negotiate in perpetuity. Also, you can't rule out the fact that the government might have influenced them. After all, the meeting was held in Asorok. So, while the labor union leaders are high-fiving each other that they have achieved something, in reality, they didn't achieve much. They didn't ask the government questions. They didn't demand to know why the government devalued the Naira. Because it doesn't make sense till today. Today, it costs more to pay for petrol subsidy despite the fact that they are selling three times the amount it used to be sold before they came to power. So the government caused the inflation. The labor union leaders should have demanded to know their excuse, their reason for causing the unnecessary inflation. The price of many things have gone up as a result. And to think that it will come down again in future. That rarely happens in Nigeria.
In conclusion, the 70,000 Naira minimum wage is sure to guarantee one thing, corruption will fester in Nigeria going forward because there is no other way workers will make up for their salaries. Yes, even 200,000 Naira cannot feed an average family of four in Nigeria of today. So how in the world is a worker going to survive for one month while earning about 80 or 90,000 Naira per month? It's not possible. So they must make up by other means, whether legal or illegal. The most important thing is to survive and stay alive. Thanks for watching.